Today we've got a big one for you, the new Shrixon ZX Mark II Iron ZX4, ZX5, and ZX7. Michael is here to hit some shots, give us his insight and feedback as well. Golfers, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, you give this video a like, and then you tell us in the comments what you think of the new Shrixon Mark II Irons. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahold of Second Swing Golf, joined by Michael Geiger here in the tour van at Second Swing Minnetonka. And we're excited today because we got new irons from Strixon, uh, ZX4, ZX5, ZX7 Mark II models. Um, and I think, you know, we talked about this a little bit in the driver video we did, uh, but the previous generation ZX irons from yes. Strixon were awesome. I mean, really good in the fittings, very popular in the fittings. I think that really elevated their brand a little bit. So. Uh, this iron series then is obviously very exciting. A lot of anticipation for this one, like you yeah. mentioned. Mm -hmm. Strixon's been putting out great irons for for decades, basically. Yeah, yeah. But really that last iron release is kind of what I think cemented their reputation in the minds of, of golf purists as yeah. in the kind of top yeah. echelon. I'm really curious to see if these kind of continue that forward momentum. Right, right. I mean, that was uh, the ZX5, uh, I think, and ZX7 in particular, got a lot of momentum building yes. uh, because mm -hmm. of uh, you know, the player's distance category and those player's ca cavity categories, really good performance there. And so uh, I also think now you're holding the ZX4. So yes. We can kind of start there because I think the past iteration, I'm holding the, pa the past model in my hand, and then you've got the current one, the Mark II in your hand. They really refined the look a little bit yes. of that ZX4. Uh, they cleaned up, they made it a kind of a cavity-based design. Um, I think the look of that is going to be very appealing, and I think it's going to kind of bring the ZX4 into that range of the ZX5 and 7, where golfers are really looking forward to that one and throwing that into mix a lot more, kind of as the other two models did in the previous generation. Yeah, you really hit on it there. As someone who plays sort of a blade iron myself, I typically the the look of a you know a, a big cavity is a bit jarring. This ZX4 in particular mm -hmm. is potentially looking down at it the most attractive kind of player cavity iron I've ever seen. Yeah, because it's, it's, well, it's like, it's, you know, that, because that is the, the the game improvement tech in there. It doesn't even look like it. No, because it's such exactly. A, it's, it's got that, it's a slimmer design. It also has a forged face, which yes. is really cool. And then you have mainframe technology, um, both in the four and the five, that kind of variable thickness pattern in the face, a lot of consistency across the face and efficient ball speed. Yep. Kind of in that distance realm, right? ZX4, ZX5. Mm -hmm giving you that distance. The seven then is just kind of the smaller cavity iron that has become so popular on tour with kind of low handicaps anywhere in between. Yes. Where you get a f completely forged uh, design, uh, so the soft feel, but then you get the workability, uh, you get the player's kind of control and feel. So you have the whole realm here, and I think that's what Shrixon is doing a really good job of, is giving a really good option for every golfer where maybe not as popular with the ZX4 in the previous generation. Sure, sure. I think they're really elevating that now and you're gonna have a widespread array of options here. Yes, I think, you know, as you mentioned with Strixon's momentum, I think Hideki's Masters win yes, really blew sure. that up. And I think that that really changed a lot of people's minds in terms of kind of the, the better player. I'm really curious to see if, if Strixon can also deliver on you know some of these utility irons mm -hmm. and some of these um, kind of the higher handicap right. oriented irons. Yeah, so we'll, let's go over the, the lofts here. Sure. Um, that's always a key component and I know it's a, you know, pretty common discussion point with irons nowadays. So the ZX4, kind of that, that game improvement type of model, uh, 28 and a half, 31 in the ZX5, 32 in the ZX7. Uh, I, I think the, the, the 32 degree ZX7, a little bit on the lower side yep. for kind of the player's um, kind of category, right? Yep. And I think that it's, it's cool because it actually kind of cements itself as its own unique spot there where so many irons are 34, 35, yep. um, where they're in that kind of space. 32 keeps it has a kind of a lower spinning one. I think we'll see that in testing today. Yeah, I'm really curious to see that kind of how it plays out with the stats. Well, Michael, I know you have a lot of speed. So I gave you the Project X LZ 6.5 shaft here. That yep. is the one I play in my gamers. So a lot of speed. We'll keep that spin a little bit lower for That's you. That's the plan. Uh, but we'll test all three and then we'll come back and we'll see what uh, we find in conclusions. Let's do it. All right, Michael, ZX4, uh, we talked a little bit about the appearance of it. They really refined it with yes. this series, uh, but put it down at a dress and tell me what you see. It, it's, I mentioned it in the in the intro, it's it's really a gorgeous club. Obviously there's, as expected, a slightly thicker top line, but what I love is when you compare it to the toe and the heel, it's all proportional. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't look completely out of place. Certain, yeah. Sometimes the top line gets really thick and it just, it kind of 
it's distracting to the eye. Yeah. It, it all looks, it all works together in concert, and it's just, it's a beautiful looking right. club. Right. Yeah. That's kind of what you, that's what you want, you know. And then, yes. then we'll kind of see here at the testing. But if they could get true, like the you know the the mainframe and the tech all works to give you that explosive distance and uh, uh, forgiveness in that kind of appearance, that's a really darn good iron. Exactly. Yeah, I told you viewers that he had some speed. Uh, but, so talk, talk to me about kind of, again, a little bit about, you know, maybe so the viewers know, sure. distance wise, what you typically get out of the seven iron, maybe what you're playing now or, sure. you know, things like that so that they kind of know. So my seven iron, the loft wise is, is closer. I think it's about 36 degrees. Okay. And so I usually carry it about 172 to 175. Okay. So obviously so there's, there's going to be a natural Just jump. because of loft, we're going to see more distance. That's going to be a thing. It, what's noteworthy is, I mean, I hit that off the toe. I mean, 125 feet of height is yeah. noteworthy. Yeah. And that was even farther off the toe. You it could fool me. I mean, I can definitely tell because of the smash factor. That's not quite as high, so right. I can tell you're miss hitting it. Um, but I think I really like the fact that the height is still comfortably yes. high. So, because usually, uh, especially with this type of iron, a game improvement iron, that's where you'd see that dip with a right. miss hit. Is sometimes players might not have enough speed, plus the combination of the miss hit and some stronger lofts might really have that ball dive out of the sky, and it's not really happening. It's not. Yeah, exactly. That was solid. I saw the club twirl and everything. Look at that. Yeah, I mean. Pretty good. As, yeah, I don't know what to say. It's, it's I have solid. to say, too, um, so far you've hit, you said you kind of hit, your first one was a little bit off the toe. Yes. The second one was very off the toe. It was very toe. off the toe. That one was probably it was closer close to, to the center. middle. Yeah. Um, your spin rates have been, I think, pretty good yeah. consistency considering the misses, right? I mean, if you hit this one way off the toe and only jumped up, 600. Um, I think that's something to note, and you're still spinning it comfortably high. Now, I know you're a high spin player. Yes. So that's that's to be expected to a degree, but uh, I think that's still pretty good and noteworthy as well. And again, with, with you know, this low loft of an iron, give or take about five yards of rollout, that's, yeah. that's pretty good. Yeah. Oh, goodness. That is speed and good spin too. Not that bad. Was center of the face again, or it felt good. It's okay. It's yeah. okay. Yeah, I think the stopping power piece is again, it's, and we're talking that you got you got you can swing the club pretty fast, and you're getting a lot of height out of it. But I still think, I mean, I, I, these type of irons, the whole the concern is the roll. Yes, out. exactly. Strong loft. I think it's plenty of stopping power. That's the thing. The you know two of the main quibbles people have with this kind of iron is one the look and two, kind of that factor, can they stop it? And those are two big concerns that I think have been addressed yeah. so far. I'm gonna be curious on this one here. Okay, so where was that one hit now? That was a little low off the heel. Interesting, really? Okay, so we have a variety of shots We here, do, we which do. Which is a good thing. Yes. Um, I'm not, again, I'm not trying to like, you know, poke shots at you as a, as sure. a swinger. But um, I think the fact that spin stayed within a, you know, a, a range right now, granted, because of the misses, it did jump up and down a sure. little bit. But I think it's like to see these, these like that ball that you said, I mean, I could tell by the way you hit it, the way it sounded, it was not quite perfect. One, three, two on the smash. And then these are the ones you hit really well. So yep. you dropped, what, seven yards, six yards. Yeah. Um, of carry, I think that's really forgiving. That's really good. You know, Drew, uh, I, feel, I feel it's my responsibility as a tester to hit every single part of this club face. Yeah. And so I think with these five shots, yeah. we've, we've done that. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, let me just see here if they, uh, this track man can help us. Yep. So we've got, so we've got center, center. And these are those toe ones. Yep, see, look at there that. they yep. are. Yep, there's the toe. So it's, uh, I mean, it, there you go. Trackman showed it. I, I, sometimes it doesn't pick it up all the time, so it's nice. But um, you were seeing it all over the face, and we're seeing the performance still deliver. I mean, that dispersion circle is still pretty good because we're talking about 
golf shots that are hit almost 200 yards for you. Right, exactly. And a couple of them actually did go 200 yards. And to see that still, there's a consistent shot shape. Circle's pretty yes. tight, all things considered. Um, now talk to me about the feel before we move on to ZX5. So we, I heard, I have a sound. I know what sound feedback yeah. was. Talk about feel though. So it's, I would say it's on the firmer side, but you can definitely feel that forged face. Yeah. Especially that middle one, as you'd expect. Yeah. There, there is that softness, which is, it almost feels out of place for a, yeah. a club in this category, but I was, I was very yeah. impressed. I imagine we'll still get softer and kind of quieter as we go. Yes. But um, I think that's really good feedback. I think they took a big step forward compared to the previous, previous ZX4. I would agree. Um, so now let's go on to ZX5. Um, I'll, we'll put it together and then I'll kind of get your feedback on how that look changes. Cause I know they're trying to go for this combo set here. So we'll see yeah. here. All right. So Michael ZX5 Mark II now. Yep. Um, Give me the feedback on that appearance, uh, maybe because you just had ZX4, so uh, I imagine it's a little bit smaller. Yes. And probably maybe even shorter blade length, things like that. Yeah, it's it's the ZX4's little brother. It's yeah. just it's just a smaller version. It still looks great. Um, I'm expecting, obviously, with a slightly higher loft, you know, the carry should probably go down yeah. a bit. But otherwise, I mean, again, just a really solid looking mm -hmm. iron. Good. Yeah, that's exactly you know. I think to your point about the loft, uh, I think we'll probably see that carry distance come back. I know your good ones were, you know, pushing 200. Right. We'll probably see that come down to 190. Probably. Maybe mid 180s on those solid shots. Probably. Uh, would be my guess, but you know, that's why we do the testing. Exactly. It's called a hypothesis. Perfect. Scientific method right here. Yep. Interesting. Yeah. That was probably the biggest miss hit of the day. And where? That was toe. Toe, okay. I, I don't know what it is. And again, I, we'll see. We got more shots to hit, but I, I feel like that the spin on that shot should have been lower. But it's which is a, I mean, it's a good thing. Sure, like, of course. You need you need spin with irons. You, you do. Again, very low on the okay. face and still one twenty height. Yeah. I, I actually really like how consistent these are. Yeah. Ooh, there you go. Got a hold of that one. A little better. That is high. That is long. That's very, that's very high. Also 100 club speed. <laughs> 150 feet in 150 the air. 150 feet is pretty high. Um, I actually wonder how you play a 7 iron with that much loft. That is. <laughs> but we're learning some things. This, yeah. Maybe it's a bad idea. But, I, I will say, so the first two shots you hit were about 180 carry. Yep. And you miss hit them both, you said. Yes. I think the smash factor indicated that. Certainly. Um, this one you hit more solid. And it's not like you were, so this one only went up to 188. So your miss hits there on a pretty big scale, right? You were hitting these balls 180 yards. Right. To see that drop only seven, eight yards on those misses. Exactly. And the spin not changed a ton, I think is again, encouraging. Very encouraging. There's another. That, that, could that, that could be the straightest ball I've ever seen <laughs> fly 142 feet in the air. One foot of curve to the right. How, how could you? You got to fix that. You push that one a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so there's, there's uh, something I was. That's crazy how you get your stopping power of one yard. <laughs> uh, was that one a miss or was that open? That was face a bit or? of a miss. That was okay. yeah, face is open. Face, and... See the face angle that had opened up a bit there. So. Yep. Um, there's our two clubs, ZX4 and ZX5 Mark II. Um, kind of what we thought would happen, I would imagine. Yep. Um, and I think because because the loft, and I think you hit like so with each you probably hit two that were pretty solid golf shots yep. in the center. Yep. And then you had a few kind of maybe toe or heel or whatever the case might be. Um, but this is kind of the progression we would like to see, right? Out of right. these clubs, given the loft, given what we know about the build of them. So talk to me about the feel. Did you notice a difference? Yes, on, yes. Okay, I I'm, imagine. I'm, I'm curious, the viewer at home probably a little, little bit quieter. Yeah. And there was a little bit softer. It was just- I as, thought I noticed it too. I mean, just, the, I mean, enough, yep. enough to notice it. Definitely. Um, I think, cause there's still a lot of the same properties built in, you know, the same sure. technology, mainframe, materials, et cetera, are, are similar. Um, 
I think the really big difference now is going to be the seven, the ZX think seven so Mark II. Uh, all, a fully forged head, I think. Well, you'll you'll feel the difference, and then you might see the difference too. But I think I'm I'm, I'm I think the consistency is pretty darn good with both of these clubs, given that they are game improvement and player resistance irons. And then we talked already about the face uh, face location uh, yep. impact and seeing that it is varying, but the distances and the numbers really aren't because if I bring this up here, I mean, you're, there's a pattern going on here and it's really, for shots going that far, you're not seeing it you know, spray about no, exactly. all over the place. Or, just, or like a crazy one that goes 200 and then one back to 170. I mean, it's, you're staying within a tight window, I think. For sure. All right, now it's the, uh, the highest demanding iron, uh, the ZX-7 Mark II. Uh, Again, looking well, the look and kind of the aesthetics at a dress. What do you see? Just again, very solid. Uh, pretty comparable to the ZX5. It's, okay. Uh, not a ton of difference. Not a ton of difference. Uh, you know, maybe a, a slightly, slightly more compact frame, but mm -hmm. all in all, um, again, just a very solid looking iron. Yeah, it's, it's funny you mention that because that was something that I know a lot of people commented on the previous generation, and that did the combo of ZX5, ZX7 yeah. was that. The appearance was similar. Um, looking down, like the top line and things like that, were very similar. Uh, just like you know, the sole width might have been bigger, things like that. Sure. But, uh, that's an important note because I think a combo set is what you know Strixon is going for here. The option to put mm -hmm. ZX4 to ZX5 or ZX5 to ZX7 with these Mark II irons, and so it's pretty good that they're able to nail down that appearance because I know that's a big piece of it for golfers that want to play that combo. Set. For sure. All right, so my first takeaway is how soft that sound. It sound it felt very soft. Yeah, that was yeah. For such a similar looking iron to the ZX5, the yeah. feel is different. Yeah, that was that was very surprising. It was much sounder softening to me. Okay, talk to me about that one. Felt okay. Um, Surprised the smash was that low because maybe it speaks to the club. It felt pretty solid. Yeah. Um, I thought I noticed something slightly different in the sound, a little bit. It was it was a bit lower, maybe a the touch reason, more towards the heel. Okay, okay. Only reason I say that is, um, yeah, it sounded a little bit like I don't know if the thuddier is the right the right word. Probably, it's not even probably a word, but a little duller. Yeah, 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 something like that. And and. Anyway, I just noticed the difference, but I also saw the ball go a pretty similar distance. Yeah, no, that seven yard fade is pretty much what I'm shooting for with the seven iron. Curious to see that one. Wow. So that one clearly was not a perfect strike. No. Um, I just am, I'm, I am impressed by how consistent the spin and the carry distance yeah. with each of these. Very so, impressed. Because we've got very different smash yes. factors. I continue to have the least efficient swing in America. But, <laughs> well, um, I, that is a very, uh, that's some crazy hyperbole right there. Um, but what we do have is spin rates changing very, well, not really changing. It's 143. The, the carry distance is staying within six yards right now. Yeah. Um, I think that's very noteworthy. We'll hit a couple more just to see, but I think that's really good that a play, or an iron of that size and feel and you know the, the, the player's yes. type of club is that kind of forgiving and consistent. Wow. Left. Well, spin, doesn't get much straighter than that. Spin dropped down a little bit, carry went up. I mean, another one, it, but you're falling in, I think it's the same window though. It's like it's, 177 to 183 is pretty where, much. This ball, where this club is carrying. It's really good. That's a good one to end on. Oh, that's gonna, that'll, that'll go outside the carry window. Oh, it didn't, that's crazy. Well, it did, barely maybe. A couple yards like, Well, I saw the ball speed jump up and I was like, okay, this is gonna, <laughs> you know, this is gonna go <laughs> approach 190. Yeah, um, no, but the height, 144. Yeah. That's that's really good. That's this is good. really good. Yes. One 183, 178, 177, 182, 183. Spin is within I mean, I mean that kudos to you for swinging like that for one. Um, but then also 
we can bring this up too. We can see, yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty. That's tremendous. That's what, what that we're is. looking for. That's yeah, tremendous. this ZX7. Uh, for as much as it looks like the ZX5, I was so. Imp I mean, it really is a step forward in terms of softness and a dispersion. I yeah, mean, the the north to south distance-wise dispersion is crazy too. Um, see if I can pull up some of these. So we got some various locations on the face too, and they're still. You know, it looks like this one wasn't quite picked up, but four of the five here are picked up. Right. And they're in different spots on the face, but they're traveling the same to the same place, it seems right. like, which I think is a huge, huge win for, for Shrixon here. And Certainly. I think there's a reason they were so good in the last generation. And clearly they've upped the game a little bit with these. All right, Michael, testing complete. Uh, that was fun to watch. Um, Thank you. you know, we had some high swing speeds, but we also had some high consistency and superb forgiveness. Uh, and also as we got going and you got kind of more comfortable maybe with a, a smaller club head. We mm -hmm. saw that, that dispersion shrink a little bit too, which was fun to see. Yeah, what was really cool with these irons was we kind of saw, as we went through the progression, we saw exactly what we should have seen. We saw yeah. carry drop down a little bit. We saw yeah. height go up. We saw the spin rates tighten up. We saw the dispersion yeah. tighten up. It, these irons really deliver on what they promise. The, if you're looking for the ZX4, you're gonna get a really powerful iron yeah. That is incredibly forgiving, and then mm -hmm. if you drop all the way down to ZX7, right. you're going to see that that control that the right. better player wants. Right, and then I didn't even mention this in the, at, at the beginning yet, but uh, the one piece that we're not actually able to test today because we're inside on the map, but is that VT sole. Yes. Uh, the kind of the two tiered sole, you can really see it. There's kind of uh, a, a sharp edge there on the sole, mm -hmm. and then there's the two different tiers to it. Um, it's really smooth turf interaction. Uh, I know that's been a really good piece of feedback from the customers that have got fit here for Shrixon irons in the past. So of course they implemented it into the Mark IIs here as well. Uh, but let's just kind of go through each one. We'll kind of maybe identify the golfers that sure. they're best fit for. ZX4, uh, the largest game improvement. Uh, just talk to me about the characteristics of the player that'll be playing those. Yeah, ones. I mean, I think as you'd expect, maybe a mid to high handicapper, but I was impressed with that forged face. Yeah. It, it could easily be a, a longer lofted alternative in the bag of, of every player. Yeah. I, I was very impressed. Mm -hmm. The ZX5 now, the tweener of these two, uh, I thought just based on your feedback on the appearance yes. though, it does kind of look like it's a player's iron, but it has a little bit more of a punch packed in there. You could give it a ZX7 paint job and, and the better player would not notice. It's yeah. incredibly appealing to the eye. And I think kind of its, its characteristics, it could really go just about probably the higher single digit handicap yeah. up. It's, it's a really solid yeah. iron. And then, well, lastly, the ZX7, the one you just hit, uh, I think I was probably the most impressed with of the yes, three just too. because of how consistent it was with various, um, you know, maybe strike locations, sure. but then just to see that spin so tight where you usually see that level of spin consistency with someone that's hitting, you know, the direct center of the face every single time. Right. And instead it was, again, I'm not trying to harp on, on your strike locations, sure. but I, I'm, it's just the fact of the matter. You hit a couple, I think there was one toe, one heel, and you see that ball not really waver yes. was awesome. No, I mean, the better player, what they're looking for is consistent north-south dispersion and consistent spin rate. Those were, they, they were nailed. I mean, it was, yeah. I was super impressed with the I mean, you had, you had a lot of birdie chances out there today. I, the, knowing my putting, I cashed in on none of them, <laughs> but it, it's very nice to know that it's not the iron's fault. <laughs> well, uh, I think the Shrixon ZX Mark II irons are going to be big winners in 2023 and beyond. So golfers, uh, come in and get fit. Um, swing the club like Michael. Hit iron shots like Michael with the ZX4, ZX5, and ZX7 Mark II irons, and uh, start lowering your scores. Hit more greens regulation. So, Michael, thanks for coming in and uh, hitting the shots and giving your feedback today. Uh, really good stuff. Thank you, Drew.